Hello everyone, I am Kana Shahid. Welcome back to our fifth lecture of Electronics Measurement. And today's um, topic that we are going to discuss is uh, power monitoring using directional coupler. So uh, basically the directional coupler is extensively used in the microwave system for power measurement and uh, the reason is, uh, the first of all is that directional coupler is a device which actually responds to a uh, wave traveling in a particular direction. So, uh, why we are using directional coupler in microwave system? Because in a transmission system, each wave on the system can be considered as a transmitting power in the direction in which uh, that wave travels. So, uh, the power that is associated with any individual wave traveling in one particular direction will be actually independent, will be actually independent of the presence of any other wave traveling in opposite direction. So, uh, we can make use of uh, this directional coupler in, uh, in transmission line system where we are only uh, concerned about um, Maybe uh, because in transmission line there are two types of wave, incident wave and reflected wave. So if we are uh, only, uh, if you only want to measure the power of an incident wave, then uh, we can use a direction coupler because uh, in that case the reflected wave, power of reflected wave won't be, um, won't be, uh, uh, won't be any impression on the power measurement of the incident wave. So the typical arrangement is like this that uh, the, there are two uh, system has been arranged um, one system is this this is your coaxial cable transmission line and uh, we call it a, uh, call it as a primary system because the uh, wave uh, the power of the wave that we are going to measure will, uh, will travel through this uh, primary system this transmission line and there is secondary system this which consists of two coaxial cables uh, and uh, donated as A and B. So these uh, two uh, secondary system and the primary system has been connected using the help of load T. So this is uh, uh, just an arrangement so to make sure that uh, this uh, loop projects in to a primary system and uh, it is connected with the secondary system as well. So, uh, with the help of uh, designing uh, by uh, proper designing of this loop D uh, in this, uh, this system, we can actually uh, measure the power in the transmission line uh, for a particular direction. So, you can see that uh, I have written here that uh, yeah, the same thing, the loop D. So, consider now the case of wave traveling in uh, towards the right direction. So, in this system, because we are saying that uh, the directional coupler behaves uh, for a wave traveling in a particular direction. So, let's assume our wave, our wave is traveling in this direction, uh, in the right direction. So, what happens is that uh, the wave that is traveling will affect this uh, loop that is uh, that uh, that is a connection between these two systems uh, electrostatically and uh, the electrostatic uh, coupling will happen and the magnetic coupling uh, simultaneously, simultaneously will happen uh, will occur uh, in this uh, loop D. So. Uh, the electric field of this wave induced a charge in loop D, the equivalent circuit has been shown here. So only uh, electric uh, uh, induced charge. So here you can see that when a uh, wave is traveling in the uh, right direction, it will uh, induce the electric charge into this coupled D, due to which uh, current will flow. Now you, uh, we can say the wave will uh, flow through these two sections of the secondary system, the section A and section B. The direction we can see because it is connected in this way and the electrostatic um, 
voltage that has been generated here is E1. So, uh, with the help of a capacitor, it has been uh, yeah, through a series of um, capacitance, uh, it will produce a current following in arrow direction. So, uh, due to the flow of wave in the right direction, the electrostatic coupling happens and for that coupling, we can see a direction of wave following in both the section A and B and we can observe the direction in this case. Next, uh, at the same time, magnetic coupling, magnetic flux also um, generates. So, the loop uh, magnetic flux, this uh, magnetic flux generated in the loop T, uh, it will cause a voltage E2, which will be induced in series of the loop D. So, uh, this uh, series connection, you can see that it causes the flow of wave in this particular direction. So you can see the uh, direction uh, is like this. So for both the cases, if you observe, uh, the wave that is traveling is in the right direction. But for uh, electrostatic coupling, uh, the electric charge that, that has been uh, induced in the uh, loop D is uh, in the section A if we consider only section A then this direction due to E1 and this direction due to E2 is in the same direction so both the wave will add and it will travel through the section A of the cylinder system but the due to magnetic flux the and uh, due to electric charge uh, both the wave that is traveling through the Section B is uh, for uh, electric charge because of electric uh, charge, it is going in section B, and because of magnetic flux, it is uh, going outward. So, you can see in section B, the wave will cancel each other. Okay, so for the same wave that is traveling through the uh, primary system. Uh, It is affecting uh, electrostatically and magnetically uh, the loop D and uh, due to that uh, the magnetic and electrostatic coupling due to that the two voltage generated E1 and E2 generates two waves in uh, both the section A1 and A2. For both the waves in section uh, A, A uh, sorry, not A and B. Uh, a and B. The, uh, for both the waves in section A, it added together, and in section B, it uh, cancelled each other. So the cancellation will be possible only if the electric and magnetic coupling are so proportional that it induces the magnetic effect, uh, in the induced wave of the magnetic uh, and the electric coupling of the same amplitude. So, hence the wave traveling to the right in the primary line produces only one resultant wave in the secondary system. Yeah. Okay, one resultant wave that the wave uh, that has been added in the section A and there is no wave travels in the direction B. As we have uh, discussed that the wave will cancel each other. So, uh, we will be having only one resultant wave in section A. So, if we connect this section A like shown in this figure to uh, terminate to Z0, it is nothing but a characteristic impedance. So, if for a wave traveling in y direction and um, we got a resultant wave in section A, if we uh, terminate the section A with a characteristic incidence and if we uh, connect the volumeter with any equivalent device at the end of end of this section, then we can measure the power of the induced resultant. Uh, we can measure the power of the resultant induced wave in the section A, which is proportional to the wave traveling in the right direction of in the primary system. Okay. Uh, so,
So if we terminate uh, the section, then we have discussed that uh, it will uh, the thermocouple or any crystal detector we uh, connect with the section A where we have the resultant wave, induced wave, then the, it will uh, give you the uh, power uh, of the induced wave. Since the induced wave is proportional to the wave on the primary system, the power can be determined by the measurement of power of the induced wave. And obviously, uh, the knowledge of coupling system is very important. So, the magnitude of electric and magnetic coupling in the figure that we have uh, discussed in this figure is actually uh, controlled by the design of coupling with D. So, what is the loop D actually? The electric coupling depends on the amount of electric field. Obviously, uh, because the um, because of electric coupling, the voltage even has been engaged. So it will uh, depend on the length of the loop and also the width or diameter of its conductor. So um, depending on the length and the width of this uh, con uh, loop D, we can change the electrostatic uh, electric field in the primary system. Similarly, the magnetic coupling is determined the amount of uh, magnetic flux. So uh, that uh, magnetic flux that generates in the loop and that depends on the area enclosed within the loop and outer conductor. So this uh, magnetic uh, coupling that will happen uh, in this loop will depend on the area between the uh, this coupling and the outer conductor of the primary system. So uh, by uh, designing the uh, coupling uh, loop T accordingly, we can change the effect of electric field and the magnetic field in the system and hence we can uh, change the amount of, uh, we can say amplitude of wave induced in the section A and B. Uh, it is also to be noted that the determination of power in the primary system is made without observing the primary power. So what we are doing is we are actually measuring the power induced in uh, section B. We are not uh, disturbing the primary system and uh, due to the, uh, the wave traveling in the primary system, the induced wave in the section A, the power of which we are measuring. So, uh, it is uh, very useful because we are not disturbing the primary system in the process of measuring the power in the primary system of the wave traveling in a particular direction. So, consequently, see if the, uh, if the wave, uh, we have discussed that if, we, uh, if the wave is traveling in the right direction, then it will affect the section A. Consequently, if the wave is traveling in the uh, left direction, then the resultant wave will be, uh, the process will be seen and the resultant wave that will travel will be in section B and the wave cancelling cancellation will happen in section A. So if we connect both um, bolometer or if we can say if we terminate both uh, section A and section B with characteristic incidence, then we can uh, successfully measure the, um, yes, we can successfully measure the uh, power of the wave traveling in section A and the power of the wave traveling in section B. So, if there is incident wave traveling in the right direction and there is a reflected wave tra traveling in the opposite direction, that is left direction, then both the wave will induce the wave in section A and B. So, measuring the power of induced wave in section A will uh, be the measurement of power of incident wave and the uh, measuring of power in the section B will be the measurement of power of the reflected wave. Okay. So, uh, actually this kind of measurement where we are able to measure the incident of reflected wave is two direction system and we can, uh, we are able to measure power or amplitude of uh, both the signals and the ratio can be called as a load reflection coefficient. Uh, please go through the reference book for further details and draw a question if uh, you have any doubt. Thank you.